Hello, thanks for making time to prepare for your on-screen Paper 2 Python Practical and Programming exam. Um, in this video, we're going to go through question three, um, and we're working through the past paper at the end of the Pearson and Revision Workbook. So if you're in your 11 at Bulford, you've been given a copy of this for free. If you've lost your copy, um, we can get it cheaper than you can, so do get in touch with us. Um, but the question that we're going through I think it's easier than question two, although you get more marks. Um, the idea, hopefully, well, this video will take less than 10 minutes, um, and then you've got 10 minutes to be able to work through at your own pace. Um, so we start with a flowchart. We'll come back to that in a moment. Um, there's some calculations that we have to do. The very first thing that you do whenever you see a question like this is work out which file to open and what you should save it as. So I've opened Q03. The first video in this series tells you where you can get these from. You can also download them. Uh, there's a link in the, uh, the book itself. Um, and we'll save it, file and save as, or control shift S. Um, and we'll save it exactly what we're told to save it as, because this is the file that's going to get sent off to be marked. I've already got a copy, so I'm going to overwrite it. You must save it at the start. Um, so that if you make a mistake, you can open up the original file. Remember, as soon as you press run, it saves the file. So if you're working on the original and you press run, it's going to overwrite it. So you won't be able to go back and improve it. Um, let's have a look. We want to make an algorithm that calculates the length of the longest side of a right angle triangle, a hypotenuse. Um, we're going to call that C. The user has to type in the two shorter sides, the adjacent and the opposite um, from your maths lessons. Um, and all of those numbers have to be real, which means a floating point number and bigger than zero. OK, so we have a flowchart, and my advice is just to put your comments in for this flowchart. So the main program is going to start by creating some variables. Those will be global variables, so we'll put that in here. Create variables for sides A, B, and C. You'll get marks for comments. You'll get marks for white space. So if the flowchart tells you to do something, it's a gift. Just put it into a comment. Um, a equals, OK, it's going to be a, a real positive number. So let's say 0, 0.0 for each of them. Again, in Python, this is not necessary, but for your Edexcel GCSC computer science version of Python, um, we're going to do it anyway. We're going to initialize the variables at the start because that's what we're expected to do. And it's also considered for good practice, especially by the people who are marking the paper, um, because it tells you you'll have a variable called A and it's going to store a real value, floating point value. All right, um, in the exam, your printed copy, I would recommend ticking off the box. Uh, this is a process, something that we've done, and we've done it, so tick it off. Next, we have input or output. So we're going to input the length of side A, put the comment in, and also the part uh, for last side B. Um, so A is going to be, um, please enter the size of side A. And we'll do the same for side B. Use your white space. Make sure that your comments go above the line that you're describing and you leave some white space above so it's really clear um, that you're not describing the line um, above it. Then we have some conditional logic. So is the length of a side invalid, yes or no? And if both of them are not invalid, horrible way of describing this, a better way of saying it would be if both of the sides are valid, then we can do our calculation. So what do we mean by valid? Well, it has to be larger than zero. Um, so we can do our validation here. Check um, lengths of A and, oops, and B are valid. So if a is greater than zero and B is greater than zero. We could have done this as a nested um, if statement, but because both of these decisions go to the same place, I've um, just combined them with a logical operator saying I need that to be true and I need that to be true. Um, then we can do our calculation. So let's just put um, calculate side and C. Otherwise, tell the user their input is invalid. So you might be tempted to make the program better and keep looping round to ask until they put something valid in, but you must 
um, not do that, please. The questions always say, don't do anything additional. Just keep it as simple as possible. Um, so tell the user input is invalid. Something like that. OK, the calculation itself. Let's have a look at the next page. It says C is equal to the square root of A squared, which means A times A, plus B squared, B times B. So you might not be able to do all of that, but you can do some of that. Um, so remember in the paper two exam, you'll get given a printed copy of the PLS, the programming language subset. And if you scan through here on page 11, it tells you about the math module, um, which lets you do square roots. So that's going to be really helpful. You'll have a copy of this physically printed in your exam. Um, so we want to do a square root. So we'll assign a value to C. Where's it gone? So C is going to be the square root of something. So math.square root of something. The PLS says x. Well, we don't want x. We want to take the square root of a squared plus b squared. So you can do this one of two ways. You can say a squared, a raised to the power 2, or just a times a. Either will get you the marks. Um, and that's it. We've done the calculation. So I'll tick off that process. Round size C to show four decimal places. Right. Um, there's a couple of different ways to do this. Um, round to four dp. The easiest is um, to say C equals round. What are we rounding? The current value of C. How much are we rounding it to? To four decimal places. Um, you could use string formatting, um, which might be better, uh, but this would work. Output side C to show four decimal places. Um, so then we should display it, I suppose. Um, print side C is, and then C. OK, so we're going to run it and test it. Um, I think we'll have an error when we type some things in at the moment. So let's just see if we get a message to say it's invalid. Um, and we don't even get the invalid message because we can't compare a string and an integer. So this is because input returns a string, some text. If we want to do some comparative logic, as in comparing two values, then we have to first com uh, convert this string to an integer. So we'll use the int built-in function. The thing in brackets is the thing that we want to convert to an integer, but it shouldn't be an integer. It should be a floating point number, a real. Python doesn't understand real, so we have to use float. It means the same thing. Um, it just means that we're going to get a number that we can then convert to a, a real number. So let's try um, let's try one and minus one. It says it's invalid. Nice. It might be nice to improve the program to say which one is invalid, but we're not going to do that because you probably even get marked down for doing that. Remember, you must not add any um, additional functionality. So let's try it with some valid data and see if it works. One and one. Um, hmm, a couple of logic errors here because I haven't ever set what B is. I just copied and pasted. There we go. Well done if you spotted that. That's why we always test. Let's try again. A is 1, B is 1, and it doesn't know what math is. So we've got a runtime error here on line 26, um, because in order to use math, we have to import it. So let's put one of these irritating blocks that Edexcel insists on using everywhere. Uh, and we'll import, um, uh, we'll import math, and that will tell Python how to do a square root. Let's try 1.1. One Bad. So let's see if this should work. 1 squared plus 1 squared. 1 times 1 is 1. So 1 plus 1 is 2. The square root of 2 is 1.4142 with some extra numbers on here, but we've rounded it to four decimal places. Nice. Let's have a look and see if we can use a Pythagorean triple. If you've done that in maths, let's say 3 and 4. And the size of the third angle is 5. So 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16, 9 plus 16 is 25, the square root of 25 is 5, it does actually work. Now if you're bothered by the fact that this doesn't have four decimal places, you could use string formatting. Um, so let's have a look at that 
in here. Here we go, formatting strings, deek. Um, something dot format. Right, let's have a look and see if we can make this work. So let's say dot format. Um, and how does it work? We use these mustache brackets. Um, and then we need to say how wide it is. So it's a fixed point number. So we can have an F, um, a colon in here to say um, F. And then how many decimal places? So uh, let's have 0 0.4, 0 0.4. And then format is a function, and we need to say what we're going to round. We're going to round C, and I hope this is going to work. It's a bit of a gamble. We'll see. Three, four, and five. Oops, sorry. Yeah, that's better. So round um, does work, um, but it doesn't always display them properly. What I'd like to do, let's see if it still works, even if it's if we don't have that one in there. So let's see. Three and four. Yeah, should be rounded to four decimal places. I'm going to keep that in there just in case that gets the marks. Um, I don't know if this is strictly speaking necessary to get you the marks to display. I think if you'd rounded it this way, you would have got the mark that says round the answer to, where's it gone? Round the answer to four decimal places. But for this last one, output it to four decimal places. That is probably the hardest mark here using the string formatting. So what on earth is this syntax here? This is saying insert something instead of this random bit of um, characters here. You can put a number in here to say the order of the value, the index of the value. So if you're displaying multiple things, then that would show C instead of C. Sorry, um, D instead of C. That would show the first parameter that you pass in. But because we're putting them in order, we'll just get rid of that. It's not necessary. Then we're saying this is to two decimal places as a floating point number. Um, but remember, the syntax is all in your PLS. It just takes a little bit of practice. All right, final check. Make sure you've got white space. Make sure you've got um, uh, comments, because even though that doesn't say that you've got to do it, you will get marks for it, um, because it says, oh, yeah, use comments, white space, and layout to make it easier to understand. Wow.